giving all glory and honor to the Heavenly Father, Most High, power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's worthy to be praised for everything, forever, 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 and ever and ever. By Shalom, I shall cover shine the name of the known Savior. So, I've been going over these plagues and curses. It's coming from the Most High. I want to continue to deal with that because a lot of our people, you caught in the comfort zone. You think everything going to be just as fine and dandy when you see what's happening. Like I said, once it happened, then you react to it, then you go back to sleep. So the true servants of the Most High, friends of the Most High, the Mashiach Kavashai, never go to sleep. We ain't going to never stop on our watch. So regardless of whatever, whatever method that we bring in it, we got to bring it. You know, continue to bring this truth. Stay in it. Stay at it. Never leave it. And allow the Holy Spirit to continue to move you in the right direction to the kingdom. But it starts with us, Yahshua. You know, most I ain't dealing with nobody but us. Remember, you said in Amos 2, 3 and 2, you only have I known of all the founders of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. You see? He showed his word unto Jacob. His statutes are to Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. That's what his judgments. They have not known them. So, praise ye the Most High. So, we're near the end of our judgment. It's time for the judgment to come on the other nations. What you've been looking at. That's why he told us in Colossians 3.17, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all. Bahashama, Mashiach, Kavashai, in the name of the Lord, Savior, giving thanks to the Most High and the Father. Bahashama, Mashiach, Kavashai, in the name of the Lord, Savior. So, everything that we do, it's going to be in the name of the Lord, Savior. Say, saying, no man comes to the Father but by me. Mashiach, Kavashai told us that in St. John 14 and 6. So, we're going to the Most High. Through a Mashiach, Kavashai, that's why we thank the Most High. We thank Him for everything. See, people don't really give Him the glory for everything. Some things you're going to thank him for whenever something good happened or whatever that you think is good in your own way. You know, but whatever something bad happens, you got to thank the most high. still got to give him glory. Because you don't know why it's happening. It's happening maybe to correct us. He said, we love it. He chastised us. So you call it, call it any way you want to go. You just chastise him because he loved you or he chastised you because he corrected you. He said he's going to correct us and measure a certain amount of time. We're going to be corrected. We're still in dealing with what we got to deal with in Jacob's trouble. To come out of it, you got to come back to his law, statute, commandment, repent. You know, fear the most high, be afraid of him, be scared of him, to do wrong. So you think about him first, so I'm not going to do that, can't do that. You know, that's the things that you got to look at. You go over those laws, it'll change you. That's why I say the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. So how people are dealing with the most high and the Mashiach Yahweh Shai when they don't even say that they got to leave in what the Most High gave us, his rules and regulations, his law, such commandments, and thinking that they did it with a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Well, he told you clearly. The law was, which is past tense. Once you learn the law, then you can come to Mashiach Yahweh Shai. He said, hey, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. You know, they wrote about him. The prophets had the spirit of a Mashiach. How about that? You know, so do you have the spirit of a Mashiach? If not, you better ask the Most High for it. Because he's coming to judge and make war. You got a spirit and say, hey, what are you going to say? But, Lord, Lord, Mashiach, Mashiach, we, we did, we cast out devils in that name. We did many wonders in that name. We said, probably, you work in iniquity. I never knew you. How about that? Then, you know, people going to be doing many things in his name. It don't mean anything if you don't really have that spiritual connection with him. Running your mouth talking, that's, that's all right. But in the spirit, we're talking about something altogether different. You know, people got the information, but did you really have the spirit? Y'all talking about y'all got the Holy Ghost, y'all got the Holy Spirit, whatever, but do you really know what that is? It's got to be moving for you. It's, it's quick. It's, it's, it's alive. It ain't stopped just because you stopped in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. You caught up in that. Oh, the Holy Spirit keep on moving. It's quick. And powerful, like his word is. So we got to understand and overstand. That's why he told us in Revelation 18 and 4. Revelation 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. You know what he said? Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. 
Why is it saying her? Why do you keep hearing her? You know, I've been through a lot of scriptures. I went to uh, Isaiah the 47 chapter, which coincides with Revelation 18. But it's saying her because this is what you're dealing with. Believing in the way of this society, the curriculum of this world. Look what it says. Isaiah 47. We know we done went to Psalms 137, 7 to 9 to show you that Edom represent virgin daughter of Babylon in this, these verses here. The same her that he's saying come out of her. Let's see what that her says in Isaiah 47. It says, verse 5 says, sit thou silent. If you silent, that means shut up. Don't say nothing. And get thee in the darkness. Get thee in the darkness. Mean what? Get thee in the ignorant, not knowing. If you're proving the Bible, they're never going to know. I don't care how much you teach them. They're not going to know the way of the Most High and the Yahweh Shai. Like the Most High put that, that, uh, Veil over our face, so we can't hear or see some of our people, two thirds of our people, the same way he did all of them. All of them. Listen, that's why he said, Keep silent and get thee into darkness. How are you gonna stop them from going into darkness? With the most I say, Get into darkness, get into ignorance, which means not knowing this truth. Oh, oh, daughter of the Chaldeans, which is the same thing as Babylon. But thou shalt no more be called the lady, hear that? Come out of her, her is what? A lady, the lady of kingdoms. See, I was wrong with my people. I have polluted my inheritance and given them into thine hand. So his inheritance is the 12 tribes of Israel. When you read Deuteronomy 32 and 9, most of the inheritance is Jacob. Jacob is a lot of his inheritance. So, it says, I have polluted my inheritance, which are the children of Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel, and given them into thy hand. Whose hand are we in? If it's not the so-called white man's. It says, Thou didst show them no mercy, which is not getting something you do deserve, upon the ancient as thou very heavily laid thy yoke. Look, they just put who? Who's that? Uh, Bill Cosby. 80-something years old in prison. But the Mosiah says in verse 7, And thou said, I shall be a lady, which Mosiah said, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, which is a lady. So he's saying here, he says, hey, Verse 7, and thou said, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart. You ain't think about this in your mind, he said. Neither did remember the latter end of it. We're in the last days. So I said the last end of it. Therefore, hear now this, thou that are given the pleasures. That's why the most I said we supposed to be doing our pleasure on this holy day. But what do they, what do, they do? They pay you on the the uh the sixth day, the seventh day, beginning of the seventh day, that seventh day night, first beginning of the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, what everybody doing out there, out there partying, doing all kind of madness. They're doing their pleasures. Thou, thou that are given the pleasures, and you have the people following you in the pleasures that you do, not keeping the Sabbath holy, that dwell up carelessly, they dwell up carelessly, that serve in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. Come on. You painted yourself in the Bibles. They painted themselves in the Bibles. As themselves. And much like Shai said in St. John 8, 58. He said before Abraham was. They asked him who he was in verse 53. Who you think you are? In verse 53 in verse 58. He said in St. John 8, 50, What do you say? 48, what do you say? Before Abraham was, I am. So I mean, you can't deny this. Just look at the picture of Caesar Borgia, that so-called white image that they put up as Hamashiach Yahweh who was a black man. They said, I am, and none else beside me. Who else did that? 
Ethiopians didn't do that. I shall sit, I shall not sit as a widow. See, I shall not sit as a widow. Widow means you're not going to lose the men that are married. Neither shall I know the loss of children. Neither shall I know the loss of children. We deal with these plagues. That's why most of us say that. And that you receive not of her plagues. Or this lady's plagues. So what do you say? But these two, verse, verse 9, but these two things shall come to thee in a moment. In one day, the loss of children and widowhood. I Meaning you're going to kill the men so that women that are married going to be without husbands. They shall come upon thee in their perfection. For the multitude, this is why. For the multitude of thy sorceries, to the witchcraft, and go tell you about it. And for the great abundance of thine enchantments, psychics and palm readers and all kind of wickedness, witches and all kind of things. But thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. See, there it is. They trust in thy wickedness, right? Thou hast said, none see of me. Nobody see me. You can't see me. You don't know what I'm doing. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it have perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am. You know, you know perverted. Your wisdom and your knowledge have perverted you. And you have said in your heart, that's your mind, I am. And none else beside me. Who says that you said this? Verse 11, therefore shall evil come upon thee. That's why the most I told us, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Right? He's reminding you, verse 8, Revelation 18 and 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the most high power who judges her. So that's what it's saying there in Revelations 18th chapter, right? So let's see what's, what's continue. It says, verse 11 says, Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it rises, and misses shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. You're not gonna they're not gonna know where it's coming from. Now you're gonna start clowning them. He says, Stand now with thine enchantments. Remember what he said in verse 9. He says, For the multitude of thy sorceries. And for the great abundance of thine enchantments. All these things you're doing on the left hand side in abundance, he said. That's why he said it here. In verse 12. Stand now with thine enchantments. And with the multitude of thy sorceries. See, abundance. Now he say multitude of thy sorceries. Wherein thou hast labored from thy youth, from the beginning. Still doing the same thing. Haven't learned yet. Say, if so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail over the judgment that the Most High said he's going to bring upon you. That's why he said that you be not partakers of her what? Plagues. In Revelation 18 and 4. Thou art weary in the multitude of thy sword consuls. Let now, now you're going to say, now you're going to tell you how to let the things that they believe in help them. He said, now, let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. I mean, it's the same thing he told us. He said, hey, let that rock that you believe in, let it save you. He told us that when he was jacking us up as the Israelites. Since we want to follow the way of the heathen and learn their ways and think that their God's going to save us. He said, let them stand up, let them stand up and save you 
from the wrath I'm going to bring upon you. Just for us own people who we love. He said, Jacob, I love. He did us like this. So now you think you're not following the law, such commandments. He ain't gave them to you anyway, but you think you're going to do whatever you want to do as there's no judgment. He already told you. He's going to visit the sins of Esau. In Lamentations 4, 22. So he says, Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. That's what we just read in Revelation. 18 and 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Most High who judges her. It has nothing to do with it. What we have written, it's been written for all to see. It's just in these last days, these prophecies got to come out. That's why the Spirit went into how we as the Israelites have to humble ourselves before the Most High, repent, and not count ourselves one of the righteous that's going to be in the kingdom. Because nobody can say the number that they are. Therefore, we got to fear the Most High. You see what he's saying here? I mean, we done went into, I done went into so many times in the spirit of what are you going to do to Israel? Israel, now you go into the other nation, now everybody gets upset. Oh, I'm racist. You this, that, the third. Was I racist when I, when the most I said, I'm going to kill you, Israel? They killed us and put us to death to this point of his word being true. Zechariah 11 and 5, who oppresses, slay them and hold themselves not guilty. His word is true. We see it in front of our eyes. But if you don't know, then you'll learn about Zechariah 11 and 5. You don't know about these prophecies that the most I said what he's going to do during times of Jacob's trouble. We still in it, brothers and sisters, Yasharala, 12 tribes of Israel. But this is prophecy of what's going to happen. He said, behold, they shall be as stubble. That's like tumbleweeds. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. You know, look at this scripture. Look at um, Second Ezra 16. I want you to read... Um, I think it's um hold up. second Ezra's this is pretty deep um Most I said in second Ezra sixteen and verse nine. It says, well, look at verse eight. It says, The mighty power sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? Hmm? Look at verse six. It says, May any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood? Can you play something from the most high? He said, Can you drive away a hungry lion in the wood when the lion's hungry and searching for something to eat? 
is pray? Can you drive it away in the wood? Or may anyone quench the fire in stubble? Hear that? What do you say? In Isaiah 47 and 14. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a cold or warm at, nor fire to sit before it. It's going to be all ashes. That's what it says. Second Ezra 16 and 6. May any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood? Or may anyone quench the fire in stubble? You're going to be able to put this fire out? When it says, Behold, they shall be our stubble. He says, Or may anyone quench the fire in stubble when it have begun to burn? I mean, it's clear. Isaiah 47, 15. Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander everyone to his quarter. They're going back home. None shall save thee. They say none are going to save them. And in the end, after Mashiach Elishai served a thousand years, prophecy shall be. Obadiah 18. In the house of Jacob shall be a fire. In the house of Joseph a flame. In the house of Esau for stubble. That's what we've been reading about, this stubble. And they shall kindle in them. And devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the most I have spoken it. So... That's prophecy. So what? how the Most High going to do it? It's how it's written. And how are he going to do it? His ways and thoughts are not our ways and thoughts, but we don't know what he said there. We can only accept for what it is that he has to say. He so jacked us up. I know that. For not following his law, such commandments. He told you in Lamentations 4.22. That you know, this is our last captivity, Yashirah. This is the last time we're going to have to see captivity. We're not going to remember this anymore, it says. This going to, he's going to banish this from our, our memory, if we make it to the kingdom. That's a big if, though, because it said a righteous guest is going to be saved. Lamentations 4.22, it says, The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. Hear that? Our iniquity is pardoned. Twelve tribes of Israel, one third of the twelve tribes of Israel. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. So this is our last captivity. But you know he says, oh, he said he will visit thine iniquity. O daughter of Edom, he will discover thy sins. He's going to discover your sins. That's why it behoove everyone that's hearing this. Turn back to the most high before it's too late. Before he bring these plagues upon you. When he bring these plagues, he say all the sinners of his people are going to die. By the sword. That said the evil shall not prevent or prevail over us. Most high said, he's going to kill them. That's why I behoove you to repent. Ask the most high to forgive you. And stop following, calling on God. Because all the gods of the nations are idols. So you saying, God, you call on any God can come in, into play. Most of you say he the power of who? Abraham, who had a son named Isaac, who had a son named Jacob, who was the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. Point blank. Not just Israel, but the 12 tribes of Israel. Who's saying that? You learn to say that. That separates you from any other type of religion. Nobody said that but Hebrew Israelites. You know, he might mention them in some of these religions and so forth. Don't be like them, like the Israelites. You see what I'm saying? But there are 12 tribes of Israel who we are, and the most has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. If they can if they can number the depths of the sea and measure the 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 uh, outer space. 
Yeah, that's why they send them probes and them, those so-called probes out there into space, but they ain't going that far. Don't believe them. Don't believe the hype. All praise to the Most High, for He give His word. His word is true. Look. Go to 2nd Ezra 15. I love it. It said, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people. Who's his people? Exodus 3 and 10. So that's why I say, this message is to Yasharala, the 12 tribes of Israel. Anybody else want to listen, you can listen, but the Most High is talking to Israel. The Israelites. Let's see. He said, speaking to the ears of my people. So, if you want to get offended by this and ain't talking to you, that's your, that's your business. You're off. It says, Exodus 3 and 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, who are who? The children of Israel, out of Egypt, the 12 tribes of Israel. So now, going back to 2 Exodus 15, it says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of of my people, who are the children of Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel, the words of prophecy, things that's to come in the future, which I which I will put in thy mouth, which the Most High put in Ezra's mouth, said the Most High. So you got a problem with this? You got to take it over to Most High, because it is what said the Most High, and these things that he prophesying, that's going to happen. Don't look at the messenger. Which Israel always looked at the messenger. Any other nations look at the messenger. But you got to take it over to the most high. You say it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. That's why you got better humble yourself. Do you to humble yourself before the most high humble you. And cause them to be written in paper. So he told you, he said, cause these words to be written in paper. That's why we have them today. And that's why they can't get rid of the Bible. You know, I heard some, somebody said that they was trying to give it all the Bibles in California. I don't think so. It was the most I said, it caused them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. It said, fear not the imaginations against thee. He tell them, talking to us, Israel, he said, fear not the imaginations against us. Let you know that they are thinking of things that are totally against us. Everything they're doing, they're thinking about how they're going to maintain their rule. Remember, the devil know he got a short time, come down with much wrath. And he would come down on those and keep the commandments and have the true testimony of Mashiach Yahweh Shai, period. Because he already got the two-thirds of our people. They already locked in. They already even sold themselves to the devil. Straight up. He said, fear not the imaginations of, against thee. Let not the in, 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 incredulity of them trouble thee. That speak against thee. See? They don't worry about it. That's what he's saying. For all the unfaithful... All those that don't believe in the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob shall die in their unfaithfulness. You don't have strong faith. You hear what he said? You, un you unfaithful? He said, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. You're going to die in your unfaithfulness. Behold, said the Most High, I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword. What is a sword used for? To kill people. Famine. I'm going to starve them to death. I'll tell you, look. He's going to tell you it's like because of lack of food and great tribulation. The sword, famine, death. Going to be killing a lot of people. And destruction. Destroying a whole lot of people. And their lands. For wickedness shall, wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole world. You hear that? Wickedness have exceedingly, that's like at the highest level you can imagine. He said, wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. That's why the most said, come out of her, my people. Come out of the mindset. Come out of the things that you be part not, not, not be partakers of her sins. Do you hear what he said? For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Therefore said the Most High. So you got a problem with you got to take it over to the Most High. Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will hold my tongue no more. So I ain't going to be quiet no more. As touching their wickedness. As touching the things that they have done. That's wicked. That's why Master Shai told them in Isaiah 47 and 3. Isaiah 47 and 3. He 
I ain't gonna be most. I said I ain't gonna be quiet no more. No more. Isaiah 47 and 3. Y'all think y'all gonna be fighting. That's why they got anti-matter guns. That's why he said, look, thy nakedness shall be exposed, uncovered. It's gonna be exposed. Your nakedness, I mean you're gonna be uncovered. Me, like I say, nobody see us. He said, thy nakedness shall be uncovered. When y'all just say, <laughs> y'all just say, y'all, nobody see us. You can't see me. But he said, your nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. That's why he say, wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Most I said, therefore, Said the Most High, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. What do you say? Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance. So I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. Because he's coming in this angelic super, 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 super power. Hanging out with Mike out of the Archangel of War. Preparing to come to judge and make war. To set righteousness up on this earth. Either you die with him or you're going to be against him. Like they say, you for us or you against us. Which one do you choose? Hear what the Most High is saying. He said, I, second verse 15, they said, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. See what he said? Profanely commit. Look, he gives you clues with these words, y'all. You got to hear the word of the Most High. Profanely. Whoever it is, they profane. Listen who's profane. Remember, I didn't write it. Hebrews 12 and 16. It said, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. See? That's what he said. Which they profanely. He said, I will hold my tongue no more. Second Numbers 15 and 8. As touching their wickedness. So I'm going to speak out about it. Remember when you speak, who are we going to speak to? When the most I speak, who are we going to speak to? When you say, I ain't, gonna, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't hold back no more. I'm going to speak up. Which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things. In which they wickedly exercise themselves. All the wicked stuff that they're doing. Who are you going to speak to? The spirits. That are created for vengeance. You heard about them. I just did a whole lesson. You couldn't see nothing but that on in your face. For the whole lesson. These words of Ecclesiastes 39, 28. There'll be spirits in the apocrypha. Ecclesiastes 39, 28. There'll be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. What are they? This is what you got to fight. Fire. And hell. Remember we read the scripture where the most high brought hell down with fire mixing and while fire was going around the land? Can you imagine Hell coming down with fire inside. I mean, uh, that's the most high. Fire seems like would melt ice, but the fire still in there with the ice. Hell coming down out of the sky with fire inside. Fire and hell and famine and death. All these are created. 
for vengeance. Teach the wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword, punishing the wicked to destruction. That's what it's saying. Punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment. What the most I said. You got to hear what he's saying here. I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness. Second Ezra 15 and 8. They, they, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things. In which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and the righteous blood crieth unto me. And the souls of the just complain continually. So what he say? Teach the wild beasts and scorpions and second Ezra. Uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 39 and 30, teeth the wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice at his commandment. He will tell them what to do. These spirits that are created for vengeance. They shall rejoice at his commandment, and they shall be ready upon earth. Then you know it's coming to destroy people on the earth. When need is, and when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. They're going to do just what he's saying to do. This is what he's saying. He said, Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me. All the people that's been died, you know, and the most I says, hey, it's their time, but you did it. They did it. Innocent blood. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me. And the souls of the just complain continually. You know? They complain continually. You think we complain it down here? Shoot. Souls of the righteous and the just are complaining continually before the Most High. And therefore said the Most High, I will surely avenge them. You hear what he said? That's why it's a spirit that they know, okay, they think it's us, but the Most High said, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. This is the land of Egypt right here. America. So you're going to allow us to dwell in the land of Egypt. So look at uh, what it says in Revelations 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is America, which spiritually is called Sodom, because they allow men and men to be together. It's okay for them to get married and women and women to get married and so forth, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, which he burned up to this day in Egypt. So America was called Sodom and Egypt, spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Because Egypt is over there, you know, in the land of Ham. So called Africa. But Egypt means captivity, slavery, and bondage. We Exodus 22. So it says, where also our power was crucified. Mashiach Yahushua, crucified here. By painting him as a so-called white man. Hmm. See, it's all here. It's just a matter of us, you know, being able to realize that these scriptures are true. Second verse 15 and 11 says, But I will bring them with a mighty hand, a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, and smite Egypt. I mean, I'm a smite me to kill. Kill Egypt with plagues. I'm going to smite Egypt with plagues, he's saying. That's why he said. Well, it's in 18 and 4. Can't say it enough. So people think it's talking about leaving. What's the point of leaving America with this with the, the wrong understanding of the spirit of the most high? You're gonna take wherever you are spiritually in the mind, you will take it wherever you go. What's gonna change you? What's gonna make you be better if you don't know how to be made better according to the word of the most high? He 
talking about come out of the mindset, first and foremost. Because you're just going to go somewhere else and have the same mind, do the same thing. Lock into their way of life. Follow the way of the heathen. Verse 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Why well, say that ye be not partakers of her sins? That's what he's telling you. That you be not partakers of her sins. That you don't do the same things that they're doing that's sinning against the most high laws, such commandments. The moral laws, the civil laws, the dietary laws, the ceremonial laws. That's what it's saying. Sin is transgression of the law. That you be not partakers of her sins. What's the difference if you believe in Christmas, Easter, uh, bunnies laying eggs, and Santa Claus, big fat white man coming down with a red suit, coming down the chimney that you don't have? You go somewhere else, you still turn that lie. Still believe in that same fantasy. Come on. Root off the red nosed reindeer and so forth. Decorate your house on Christmas for, for Nimrod's birthday. I mean, come on. Bow down to this Christmas tree. You going to Belgium, but you still doing the same thing because they doing the same thing over there. Blackface and all that. You locked into whatever they doing over there. Following the way to heathen. And enjoying yourself in wickedness. That's why I say all the citizens of my people, most of us say, are going to die. He's going to kill you. And nobody getting away. You hear what it says? That you be not partakers of what? Her sins. Her sins. And that ye receive not of her plagues. As we're reading about right here. Second Exodus 15 11, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. Remember the most I put them 10 plagues on Egypt. After the last plague of killing every firstborn male that ever came into this world in Egypt or the Egyptians, shoot, Pharaoh let us go. He said, as before. And will destroy all the land thereof. We already read about it, it's gonna be on fire. Gonna burn it up. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. That's what the Most High gonna do. So you can get all they get all the things they want to try and get. Remember, it's a fight against the Most High. That's what he said. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague. And punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. You would have said that the Most High shall bring upon it. Not his people, but that the Most High going to bring upon it. Remember, Hebrews 10.31. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. Look, they that till the ground, the farmers shall mourn. They're going to be mourning. For their seed shall fail through the blasting in hell. That's the spirits that are made for vengeance. That's the second one. And with fearful consolation. Fearful consolation. Things that's going to be, gonna look, look where the sky is going to be frightening. Woe to the world. Destruction to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. Meaning draw near. The sword is used for killing and destroying. Destruction is coming. See, it's drawn near. And one people shall stand up to fight against another. And swords in their hands. I mean, why are their swords guns in their hands? But there shall be sedition among men. We already know the end result. We heard the end result. But he says before, he said, for there shall be sedition among men. And invading one another, they're going to be coming into your house. They shall not regard their kings nor princes and and the course of their actors shall stand in their power. See that? What you going to do when they come for you? Because, I mean, these things that you're looking at here is beyond your logical thinking. See, they can't teach you this in school. Go to 
Joel, the second chapter. Blow you the trumpet in Zion, verse 1, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the most high coming. For it is nigh at hand, like you just keep saying. Day of the most high coming is near at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people, you know, a great people. And a strong. There have not been ever the light, neither shall be any more after it. Even to the years of many generations. A fire devoured before them, you know. Fire is devouring before us. First spirit that he named, the spirit of vision is what? Fire. Fire devoured before them and behind them a flame burning. Once that fire burned before us, you look behind, you're going to see that flame. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them. That means going into the kingdom. Going to the kingdom, the land before them is going to be like the Garden of Eden. And behind them, a desolate, desolate wilderness. Yeah, and nothing shall escape them. Hear that? Nothing. That means nobody going to escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as horsemen. So shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains. So they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble. Stubble again. Devoured the stubble. I mean, can't get no clearer than that. If we see stubble again, as a strong people set in a battle array. Strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. For our face, people are going to be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness for all the destruction that's going to be going on in the sit in the air, black. Everybody's face is going to be black. They're going to gather blackness. And who long will be saying, I got black, I I, I'm a nigga, I'm a nigga. <laughs> I got black in me. <laughs> they always say it now, but they're going to be just off. What do you say? All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone in his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. They're going to break their ranks and be marching. Your right, your right, your right, left, right, not left, right, left. No, it's going to be right, left, right, we're on the right. Double to the red march. <laughs> Watch. Neither shall one thrust another, meaning anybody will be killing each other. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they shall fall upon the sword, when they fall upon the sword and they try and shoot us and kill us, they shall not be wounded. This great people that the most I speaking of, they shall run to and fro in the city. Here they say they're gonna run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall run upon the wall. This was spiritual power, people. They shall climb up upon the houses. They're going to climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. Hear that? This kind of spiritual power that those that are worthy of the Israelites are going to receive. You would say the earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. For all the soot, all the dark smoke and destruction that's going to be going on. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. Meaning, you're not going to be able to see the stars in the sky for all the destruction that's going to be going on. And the most high my shake of a shout shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. This is the Most High's camp. This is my Shaka camp. 
for he is strong that executes his word. For the day of the Most High is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Listen, going back to 2 Ezra 15. For there shall be, verse 16, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another, as we just read. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, no authority figure at all, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. That's what the Bible telling us. The course of the actions are going to stand in their power, doing whatever they want to do. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. You're going to be able to go to a city that you're in. You're going to be able to go to another city. That's martial law. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. Hear that? And who's more prideful than Esau? And those that follow the same way that he does. That's why I behoove you. I keep saying you got to humble yourself. Be for the most high. Bring you down to the ground. That's everybody. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed, as we just read about. And men shall be afraid. When they see that their guns don't do nothing, what, what is, you remember what it said in Joel? Two and eight. Neither shall one trust another. They shall walk every one in this path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. It says, like, and men shall be afraid. They see that? That they don't have no power. And all that they done stop piled up has no power. Oh, yeah. And men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods. And they'll be coming up in your house with guns and taking everything you have because of the lack of bread. Hear that? Because of the lack of food. Remember he said famine? That's a, that's a, that's a, uh, a spirit of vengeance. Remember he said fire and hell and famine? There it is. And death. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, 2 Numbers 15 and 19, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods. This is the ones that don't have the spiritual power at the time. Because